Amsterdam is uh, a lot uh, during the crisis of 2007, 2012 to 13, hardly any housing was built. And now that the pressure on the market is enormous, uh, Amsterdam is scrambling to find new solutions, new design solutions, new fiscal and legal solutions to house the people who want to be here. Housing in Amsterdam is tight. One of the groups that has a really hard time finding a place to live here are young people and students. The developer AM decided to work on that uh, demographic by building this project called Fila Mokum in the new Amstel quarter behind Amstel station. It's, it's building going on everywhere here now. Fila Mokum is now finished uh, uh, about two years ago and it's uh, 629 studios for sale and for rent uh, and the fact that they are small studios are small the fact that they're small is uh, to be compensated by um, collective amenities one of them is the garden that i'm sitting in now which i must say has grown up to be really beautiful well taken care of today there's nobody sitting outside but that's not so surprising but i see a lot of people walking around and also just walking through this complex of four buildings because it's convenient and pleasant. I spoke to uh, a couple of people who lived here. One said that um, she actually has very little contact with the neighbors. Uh, she did find it rather expensive and was very happy that her parents had bought her studio for her. She said, otherwise I could never have lived here. One of the other people I spoke to said that uh, quite a few of these places were bought up by investors and that they rent them out for large amounts and also to Airbnb. He says, I see tourists coming by my apartment all the time with their suitcases, and he thinks that that is bad for the community feeling. Having said that, he also said that there is a strong community feeling that people do get to know each other by having a beer out on the communal terrace or uh, 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 the other shared spaces that are here. So I think Vila is an interesting experiment in uh, creating a new kind of housing for a new demographic and definitely the kind of people that Amsterdam wants to have. So, hello, what's your name? Roos. Hello, Roos. Hi. And you live in uh, Vila Mokum in Amsterdam. Yes, I do. How did you uh, find a place here? Uh, well, my dad bought one of the studios here and uh, I moved in here. How long have you lived here now? I've lived here for two and a half years now. Oh, okay. And one of the things that makes Vila Mokum special is there are all these shared amenities. Uh, yeah, they are available. You can share a lot of spaces, outside spaces too. But I don't see them being used that often. Um, there's also a laundry place with two washers and two dryers and that's used a lot. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know. For, yeah, there's so your social life is elsewhere? Yeah, my social life is at school and uh, yeah, everywhere, but not really here at Filamokum because I don't really know my neighbors that well. Uh -huh. uh, we're standing now in the shared outside garden. Yeah. Uh, the gardens were meant as a compensation for the small houses. Do you use the garden? Yeah, and a lot of the neighbors. The houses are very small, uh -huh. but because of the shared places, people go outside, eat together, uh, meet each other here. Uh, at the places, uh, sometimes uh, they give a party, mostly in the weekend. So, so this is this is the main terrace. Do you know your neighbors? Yeah, all of them, and most of th them. Is that because of the shared space? I think it is because this is the people, uh, the place where people, c yeah, come together. Uh -huh. Also, new neighbors, they they see a lot of people here, so they they come and introduce themselves. Oh, cool! How long do you think you'll stay here? I'm getting a older now and the, 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 the age here is, is approximately between 20 and 30. I'm now 34, so I think still a few years and then it will be time to uh, find something else. Uh, and what will your next step be? I think something bigger. How yeah. many square meters do you have now? We now have 28 square meters. Ooh, that's not much. It's, it's, it's very small, but, but for a person single it's uh, big enough. The east of Amsterdam is now a really popular neighborhood, gentrifying very quickly. It's a kind of neighborhood where you see uh, lots of hip cafes and terraces and all the people sitting on the terraces, funny thing, are fairly young and look well educated and now yeah, well modestly well to do. And if you turn around all the people with a dark skin color 
are sitting on the public benches with no uh, cafe or just standing around on the street corner chatting. It's uh, striking how visible the gentrification segregation phenomenon is here. And because this part of town is so popular, because Amsterdam in general is so popular, there are a lot of building projects going on, such as these also in uh, Amsterdam East. The neighborhood is really, the neighborhood is uh, really changing fast. This housing project in the east of Amsterdam is called the Emerald, the Smaragd. Uh, I think because it's in the area of town with street names taken from Indonesian islands. And in colonial times, Indonesian was, Indonesia was called the uh, Emerald Belt. It's a significant project for a number of reasons. Uh, in the first place, it's won a lot of architecture awards. It has a reference to the Amsterdam school type architecture of the 30s. But perhaps more important, it's a mixture of several different types of um, housing for various incomes. It's a mix of apartments for sale, a mix of apartments in the higher rental regions, but also low and middle income social housing. And that's one of the reasons I think it's an important project, because that is really the Dutch tradition. This is the way the Dutch have always tried to fight segregation by mixing people of various incomes and various education levels and making sure that low and middle income social housing was in along with all the rest. Interestingly enough, when this project was designed by M3H architects and then executed by the uh, housing society called the Alliancy, they couldn't get anybody interested. Can you believe it? <laughs> now that housing is so, so tight in Amsterdam and every broom closet goes for a thousand euros, they couldn't get people interested. And this is maybe 10 years ago when this started. It wasn't until a private individual bought 12 apartments that people started to think, hey, maybe there's really something to it after all. And then things started to take off. The Westerdox Dijk, the dike along the western dock that you see here behind me, is another interesting example of how Amsterdam has confronted its housing shortage, but also by combining housing with a lot of different functions. The Westerdox Dijk has a combination of apartments in a density which is even greater than in the central canal zone. I don't think anybody would have thought this was possible. The canal zone has something like 175 uh, uh, dwellings per hectare. And here in the Westerdox Dijk, that's 200. So new building on the edge of the existing city in a density even higher than that of the old city, that is really an achievement. And they've also managed to combine housing with a number of other functions. This building uh, has a courthouse in it and the attorney's office and then a, a central alley through the middle with uh, a comedy club, a hotel, cafes, uh, bike rental, uh, all sorts of reasons to come here, which I think is important that it not just be a, a sort of closed community for the, for the judges and for the people who live here. Of course, all of this also has its downsides. There are two that I know of. The first is, uh, I hate to say it, but I think the building is absolutely hideous. I still haven't gotten used to it. I think I'll always think it's hideous. Really a missed opportunity. Oh well. And uh, another disadvantage is that the houses, be, the apartments being very close together around narrow courtyards. I know that people who live here have a tremendous trouble with the acoustics. Every word that people say downstairs on the ground floor filters up through the courtyard and can be heard loud and clear on the, on the floors above. So yes, there are downsides, but I think it's uh, an important project to show how the city is expanding, finding new land for housing, and uh, in the process, uh, expanding our, or at least my, mental map of Amsterdam.